Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on. India and Nepal sign key agreements to strengthen ties. Baloch activists hold protest against Pakistani atrocities. And Sri Lanka cuts policy rates signals rebound from crisis. And now for all the details. India and Nepal on Thursday signed seven agreements in various fields including trade and commerce, infrastructure development and payment mechanism. The agreements were exchanged after delegation level talks between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Nepalese counterpart Pushpakamal Dehel who is in New Delhi on a four-day visit. In a joint briefing, PM Modi said India-Nepal relations are based on formula of hit, highways, information ways and transways. He said the new agreements which include rail connectivity and oil pipeline will make the partnership super hit in future. He also assured issues including the border issue will also be resolved soon. हम अपने रिश्तों को हिमालय जितनी ऊंचाई देने के लिए काम करते रहेंगे और इसी भावना से हम सभी मुद्दों का चाहे बाउंड्री का हो या कोई और विषय सभी का समाधान करेंगे एंड आफ्टर कंडक्टिंग सेवरल राउंड्स ऑफ मीटिंग्स विद सीनियर स्टेट ऑफिशियल्स Community leaders and other stakeholders, India's Home Minister Amit Shah on Thursday announced a pro-panel for investigation of violence in Manipur. The pro-panel, headed by retired Chief Justice of High Court, will investigate the reasons of widespread violence and the people responsible for the arson. He also announced a peace committee to be set up under the governor. Additionally, six cases of violence were also handed over to Federal Investigative Agency, CBI. और मैं सभी मणिपुर वासियों को विश्वास दिलाना चाहता हूं किसी भी पक्षपात और भेदभाव के बगैर हिंसा के मूल तक जाकर आने वाले समय में कभी हिंसा न हो इस प्रकार की एक न्यूट्रल जांच और दोषियों तो को दंडित करने की कार्यवाही की जाएगी The violence in Manipur began on 3rd of May when tribal groups clashed with the ethnic Meitei community over their demand for scheduled tribe status. The clashes have killed at least 60 people and displaced thousands. Well, Baloch activists staged anti-Pakistan protest across the UK, Netherlands and Germany this week to mark the Black Day when Pakistan conducted nuclear tests in Balochistan in the year 1998. Members of the Free Balochistan Movement and Baloch National Movement staged anti-Pakistan protests this week in the UK, Netherlands, and Germany against the nuclear test carried out on May 28, 1998, in Balochistan. The protesters highlighted countless atrocities against the Baloch people who are still suffering from the adverse effects of the nuclear test. They also asked the UN and the international community to put conditions on Pakistan's nuclear weapons before granting any loan or assistance to the country so that both regional and world peace is maintained. It is imperative that we hold Pakistan accountable for its actions and ensure that appropriation measures are taken to safeguard the people of Balochistan and prevent further nuclear testing in the region. The activist also raised concerns that to tackle its economic crisis Pakistan could possibly sell its nuclear assets to terrorists as its leaders often threaten they can go on any adventure for the country's sustainability The Taliban ruled Afghanistan's acting foreign minister Amir Khan Muttaki during a meeting with family members of the 18 Afghan migrants who died while being smuggled into Bulgaria called the sanctions imposed by foreign countries as cruel. Muttaki said the world countries should listen and they should not pursue their cases under the pretext that people are being harmed here. 
He further said that Afghanistan is a home for all Afghans, adding that if someone likes the government or not, he or she has the right to live in this country, invest in business and live a dignified life. In March, the Taliban drew criticism from many foreign governments and some Afghans were making a U-turn on signals all girls' high schools would be opened. The country's assets have remained frozen due to sanctions that have severely hampered banking, business and development. And the youth wing of opposition, CPN-UML, on Wednesday burned the effigy of Nepal President Ram Chandra Podil and PM Pushp Kamal Dehel in a protest against the ratification of the Citizenship Amendment Bill. Protests have erupted after Podil authenticated the bill to amend the Citizenship Act, which his predecessor, Bidya Devi Bhandari, had refused to endorse twice. CPN-UML has been protesting against certain provisions in the bill and in the past defended the stance of the former president. Although the constitution says the children of parents who have acquired citizenship by birth will get citizenship by descent, hundreds of thousands of youth were deprived of citizenship for a lack of law. The passage of this bill has now cleared the way for up to 400,000 people who were earlier stateless. And Sri Lanka's central bank cut its key interest rates by 250 basis points on Thursday amid easing inflationary pressures signalling that the South Asian nation was emerging from a devastating financial crisis. Central Bank Chief Nandalal Virasinghe said the rate change will ease pressure and hopefully start credit inflow to businesses. After the announcement, Sri Lanka's rupee currency rose to its highest since April 2022 at 289 to the dollar. The rate cut comes after the key inflation rate eased to 25.2% in May from 35.3% in April. Veera Singh said our commitment to the IMF is to bring down inflation to single digit by end of 2024. We are doing that almost a year earlier. And after around nine years of meritorious service, three members of the K-9 squad of India's Central Industrial Security Force retired on Wednesday. Rocky, a male golden retriever, and Romeo, a cocker spaniel, were awarded medals and shard with rose petals for their service. The third one, Sony, a female German shepherd, however, could not attend the ceremony due to health issues. The CISF Stork Squad employs more than 60 canines of different breeds. They detect unmanned items and baggage across Delhi Metro's crucial stations and are proved to be an asset for the security unit. और हमें गर्व है कि हमारे साथी जो हैं उन्होंने अब नौ वर्ष तक देश की सेवा करी है और आज हम लोगों ने अब देख रहे हैं पूरा सीएसएफ परिवार जो शोकाकुल है कि हमारे जो साथी जो हैं हमारे बीच में से जा रहे हैं आज इनको फ्रेंडी कोस नाम की एक संस्था है उसको सुपुर्द किया गया है जहां पर इनके जो आगे का भविष्य है उसके बारे में इनका ख्याल रखा जाएगा और Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.